Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what it means for a skincare product to be hypoallergenic. You see this commonly, skincare products advertised as hypoallergenic, but what does that actually mean? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my channel out a lot. Hypoallergenic, the name kind of implies low allergen potential. Is there any truth to that? Well, unfortunately, the FDA does not regulate or oversee usage of the term hypoallergenic. Similar to other nebulous terms like non-toxic, even cruelty-free is not regulated, and those of you who seek out cruelty-free skincare products know that you often have to do a little bit more of a deep dive on brands that claim to be cruelty-free, because they might sell in China, for example, where animal testing uh, is, is still a thing or non-GMO, okay. Uh, the FDA doesn't oversee those things, so that gives the brand a lot of autonomy with the use of that term, and they can apply it to their products as they see fit. They can define hypoallergenic for their own purposes. And in other words, hypoallergenic is basically marketing. It basically is a way to market a product to a specific audience particularly those out there who self-identify as having sensitive skin, will often seek out hypoallergenic products. The other group are new parents, um, or new caregivers, I should say, of, of babies, because we want to avoid potentially irritating things on young children's skin. Their skin is still developing, it's thin, it's more delicate you'll see a lot of baby care products labeled hypoallergenic. Not protecting your baby though from developing allergies using these products, and I will explain in a moment. Um, honestly, while it's a marketing term, I have to say in my experience seeing products on the market, they do tend to use that term with a degree of, uh, I don't know, kind of covering the bases of a product that has few common allergens. Not always a guarantee, but has few common allergens, meaning ingredients that commonly cause skin allergies. It's difficult though, you can't protect the population 100% from skin allergies. Why is that? Allergies are incredibly individualized and there is no such thing as an allergen-free anything. You can develop an allergy to any ingredient, no matter the product, at any time, including products that you're already using and have been using for years with no problem. And so, honestly, if you look at a brand, you know, what are they supposed to do? They can't protect you 100%. Similarly, with food, people are allergic to certain ingredients in food like peanuts, um, eggs, and that doesn't mean that we all have to avoid those ingredients. Likewise, common allergens in skincare products doesn't necessarily mean we all have to avoid them. I would say most brands though do a pretty decent job labeling a product as hypoallergenic when it does avoid the most common allergens, things like fragrance and certain preservatives. And for people who self-identify as having sensitive skin, you may not necessarily need to avoid these ingredients either. Sometimes people temporarily have sensitive skin because maybe they're on a medication that causes burning or stinging when things come in contact with the skin. Maybe they have rosacea. And so choosing products that are hypoallergenic, it's not a guarantee that you won't develop a problem to that product. So be wary if you are somebody who has sensitive skin and you, you know, think that you have to have hypoallergenic products, they're not necessarily guaranteeing that a problem will not arise. Again, you can develop an allergy or a problem to any ingredient. Hypoallergenic, many times, is accompanied by a higher price point, similar to cruelty-free. A lot of times when companies, especially in the beginning of claims like this, a lot of times when companies start making these claims, they use it to substantiate a higher price point. As the claim becomes more popular, the, the market kind of levels out and you have more affordable options, like non-toxic. We see that everywhere, and now there are tons of non-toxic affordable brands. I think even Walmart has one. So, you know, that's kind of the trajectory in terms of the lifespan of these marketing claims like hypoallergenic. For people who have sensitive skin, eczema, 
I don't think it's a bad idea necessarily to seek out products that are labeled hypoallergenic, just to kind of have a starting point. And then you do need to do a little bit of a deep dive on ingredients if you are in fact confirmed to be allergic to something. Um, how do you know if you are allergic to something though? What does it look like? Most commonly when somebody is allergic to an ingredient in a product, uh, it can present in a variety of ways, typically with redness, irritation, itch is a very common symptom. And you might develop it only in the location where you're applying the products. But in some cases, it may be a product that you're applying to thicker skin and is not causing problems like your hands, but then you're touching thinner skin and transferring that allergen to the thinner skin, like your eyes, around your mouth, maybe your neck, and you develop rashes there. And there's a disconnect between the product and the rash in your mind because you're not putting it in those places, but you can still develop a rash in those areas. People can develop allergies, of course, to other things beyond their skincare products. Um, cleaning products, household products are a common source. Um, but you know, a lot of occupational exposures are common allergens. People who work in the food industry, for example, can commonly develop allergens. And then uh, hairstylists and uh, masseuses commonly develop various types of contact dermatitis two common allergens on their hands because they're always you know exposed to those things on their hand you know particularly on the hands so it might actually be something that you come in contact with a lot more at work or you know something that you're using in your home when it comes to testing for allergies this is something that you would see a board certified dermatologist for who specializes in something called patch testing many dermatologists do this but not all of them do uh, the reason they don't all do it is that it's a bit involved and you have to have you know kind of the support staff to initiate it but many do and what patch testing is is basically where we put a panel of common allergens on your back and have you come back the following day and then again at 48 hours and often again at 72 hours to figure out if anything that we put on your back causes an allergic reaction. And then we take that ingredient that did cause the reaction and we say, okay, this is what you're allergic to, now you have to avoid it. And we can give you some literature on common products that have that ingredient so you are armed with a better understanding of what not to buy. But this isn't gonna be possible for everybody. So how do you how do you do it yourself? How do you DIY patch testing? Um, you certainly can, and, and arguably it's a good idea for everyone to consider doing this. All you have to do is take a little bit of the product and apply it to your inner um, forearm. You're just gonna put a little bit there, just a tiny amount, cover it with like a Band-Aid. Then you're gonna wait 24 to 48 hours, take a look at it. If it's red, irritated, itchy, inflamed, probably a something you might wanna be careful about. Doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're allergic to something in the product. It could be an irritant reaction. Um, so it's not a foolproof way to go about doing it, but it is at least a step and something that you can do yourself to figure out if something is gonna cause problems for you. To reiterate, hypoallergenic is simply a marketing term. It does not guarantee a product will not cause skin allergies or any type of skin problem. So uh, while it's fine to buy hypoallergenic products, I frequently do and recommend many that are labeled as hypoallergenic. Just to understand that it is not 100% without risk. There's no such thing as a product that will not cause problems for some people. Skin allergies can develop at any time to any product that you maybe have been using for years. So don't just think, oh, I've been using this for a long time. I've never had a problem to it with it. Don't think that that means it's not the culprit. The other thing about developing skin allergies to ingredients is kind of the way that you are being exposed to them. Think about how you're using the product. That makes a difference in terms of likelihood of developing allergies. Using more products increases the risk that you will develop an allergy because you're seeing the allergens more often. Many ingredients are what are called co-sensitizers, meaning they make it more likely that you will develop an allergy to something that something else that you're coming in contact with. Fragrance is a common co-sensitizing ingredient as well as a very common skin allergen. 
So trying to stick to a very simple skincare routine that doesn't have a ton of products in it and choose products that have a short ingredient list. You're more likely to develop an allergy to something that uh, is in a leave-on form like a moisturizer or a sunscreen than in something that is a rinse-off product like a shampoo or a body wash, but you still can develop allergies to ingredients in rinse-off products. It's just less likely. The other factor that goes into play in terms of skin allergies is the type, the nature of your skin when you're applying the product. If you're putting products on to skin that is like peeling, irritated, maybe you have a rash, that is more of a setup for you to, to subsequently develop sensitization and an allergy. For example, if you have recently started a retinol or retinoid and you're undergoing a lot of peeling from that, very common that's expected, if you then try and soothe that with a bunch of products that have long ingredient lists and a lot of common allergens, that is more of a risky setup for developing sensitization. So you kind of have to keep the whole picture in mind as far as skin allergies. And of course, if you have any underlying skin disease, eczema is going to be a skin condition where you're more likely to develop allergies to ingredients. Why? Well, the skin barrier in people with eczema is impaired as part of their disease process. And because of that, more allergens can get into the skin and you can then mount that uh, sensitization to those common allergens. Things like fragrance. In the description box, I'm gonna list some common allergens by all means though, that it does not mean to study that list and avoid everything on there uh, whatsoever. I personally think the better thing to do is to just keep the number of products to a minimum, try and choose products that have a short ingredient list, um, and keep your routine as simple as possible. Sunscreen, cleanser, moisturizer. I love serums and all that stuff, but the more the more things you add into your routine, the more likely for problems. Not only skin allergy, but irritation. When you have irritation, that too is a setup for an increased risk of developing sensitivity. So try and keep things to a minimum. Personally, you guys know, I choose to avoid as best I'm able fragrance in leave-on products because of the possibility of co-sensitizing because many fragrance ingredients beyond being allergens also cause vasodilation in the skin, meaning they can worsen redness. And I have eczema, so I choose to avoid fragrance just as a precaution in leave-on products. I know many people think that that's extreme, but it is just my choice. You do not have to do that, however, um, so, you know, it's to each their own what they want to do. When it comes to fragrance as an allergen, it gets tricky because fragrance is not just one thing. It's numerous ingredients. You can de develop an allergy to some of those ingredients. Um, one of those ingredients, when we do the patch testing, we patch test against uh, something called fragrance mix, which contains some of the more common compounds present in fragrance that are allergens. Linalu, geraniol, for example. Sometimes you will see these individual components called out on labels, but again, fragrance can be so many things and it can actually, a product can actually have fragrance and be labeled fragrance free because certain ingredients that um, you know are fragrant have other, um, do other things in a product. Maybe they act as a preservative or an emollient. So companies can put that ingredient in and the product may not have an odor or scent and they can call it fragrance free. So you, if you have an allergy to fragrance, you really have to understand your allergen and read ingredient labels very carefully. It can be challenging, but don't get hung up on labels and ingredients Try and just keep the routine to a minimum. In my opinion, that is the best thing to do and avoid the temptation to try out a bunch of products, particularly if your skin is irritated, inflamed. Really just resist the urge to self-soothe with a new product. Uh, it, you know, you could potentially have issues. All right, you made it this far. 
I wanna tell you guys though about a brand that I've talked about in so many videos, but it is my go-to recommendation for people who are dealing with a lot of irritation and they don't know where to go as far as choosing skincare products. Of course, it's hypoallergenic in, on the labeling, but it's Vanny Cream brand. Vanny Cream brand is a very no-nonsense brand that makes products formulated with very short ingredient list and free of the common allergens. I think they're a very good brand for people dealing with irritation, sensitivity, just want something basic that's lower risk. I always recommend Vanny Cream. For example, if somebody has a lot of irritation from Retin-A, it's much better to use something bland like a Vanny Cream moisturizer with a short ingredient list, free of common allergens, than to use some exotic, expensive cream that has a long ingredient list with you know maybe essential oils and various botanic extracts that we don't really know like anything about. <laughs> Uh, it's much safer to use the boring stuff. And Vanny Cream, you know, it may not be exotic or anything, but it is a better choice in those situations in particular. Or if you've got eczema and you deal with a lot of eczema flares, Vanny Cream is a better choice. That's not to say, however, that it is 100% foolproof and that you'll never develop a problem to something in the Vanny Cream products. Um, no, but they are lower risk, so a better choice. Super confusing, right? Um, but yeah, I want you guys to understand that hypoallergenic does not mean uh, risk-free, and hypoallergenic is defined by the brand, not by any sort of regulatory body, and they're gonna define it to meet their own needs as far as marketing. At the end of the day, it is a marketing claim. Even your hypoallergenic dog is not truly free of the risk of allergies. As somebody with allergies to pet dander, I can attest to that 100% personally, as well as clinically. Uh, so yeah, hope this video was helpful to you guys as far as navigating nebulous marketing terms like hypoallergenic. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, bye.